360 video editing and crazy hair, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, my name is Darren Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. If you haven't already figured it out, Snubs is missing. So if you see her, please send an email to feedback at hack5.org. We're all very worried. No, you're tuning in while we're all off, which is why this is going to be a somewhat of an abbreviated episode in that Shannon and I are currently hacking across the planet. You can find more details about that over at... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Actually, you can just go ahead and head over to uh, Shannon's Instagram to see her and a llama. How crazy. Otherwise, hackacrosstheplanet.com will take you to all the details on the meetups. If you're watching this week, you may be able to get in on the uh, Gold Coast or Sydney, if not Tokyo meetups. So check that out at hackacrosstheplanet.com. But what we're going to do this week is pick up on some brief stuff that we were doing last week as an introduction to VR videography or 360 videography or however you want to call it. Uh, and just take a quick look at what it takes to actually edit some video in that format. So basically, this is going to vary uh, based on the vendor of your particular camera. And as an example here, I'm using the Ricoh Theta, uh, but essentially, the workflow for all of these is, I mean, it's, it's kind of bizarre because we really are just stepping into the kiddie pool here, as it were, with this technology. But for each particular camera, there's an initial ingestion uh, that tool that is going to be particular to that specific camera. So for the Ricoh Theta, the first thing I need to do off of that camera, which has 280 degree lenses, is run it through their tool, which is going to give me my Equa Rectangular formatted video. That's going to be different if you're using a Kodak SP360, if you're using a, a Gyroptic, uh, if you're using a Bubble, if you're whatever camera you happen to be using. That said, Equo Rectangular, as we talked about last week, seems to be the format of choice for this kind of videography. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like. So here we have a couple of videos, and this is the... This is what it looks like coming right off the camera, okay? And as you can see, this is actually not a very large resolution. I think this is basically 1080p across two lenses, so you get something like 1080, actually it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Let's go ahead and actually check this here under media information and the codec. You'll see, yeah, it's 1920 by 1090. It, it's not really that great. Um, and that's why I say like this camera seems to do all right when it comes to still photography. Video is a little lacking, but hey, you know, it fits in your pocket. For those bigger rigs, check out the, in fact, the crazy one that Facebook launched. Uh, you're going to get amazing video from those. Either way, whatever the workflow happens to be, Equa Rectangular seems to be the format of choice when it actually comes to chopping this up. Because I've got this really awesome long video from this helicopter tour over Waikiki, and I don't necessarily need the bits where we go into takeoff and landing and stuff like that. So I just want to get the cool stuff. By the way, thumbs up for the crazy hair today, because I just I feel crazy today. Uh, that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we convert that. So, with the Ricoh, for instance, if I open this clip in the special application here, I'll get the option to go ahead and save this out into a playable format. You'll notice, in fact, I get a couple of yen symbols here. It's a Japanese company, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but this software spits out an underscore ER or equi rectangular format. I've already gone ahead and done that, so I end up with something that looks like this. And as we talked about last week, it's stretched at the top, it's stretched at the bottom, it seems pretty normal in the middle. But we want to go ahead and trim this a little bit. So what we'll need to do is any nonlinear editor, I happen to be a big fan of uh, Premiere, and I'll go ahead and just drop that guy onto the timeline. Another fun little tip here, I'm going to go ahead and quit that. Another fun little tip here is in Premiere, if you just drag the clip onto the new icon, it will create a timeline that already has all of the parameters uh, for that particular video. And you'll see right there it says sequence is 1920 by 960. So as you can see, we have lost considerable resolution. So that's why if you saw the behind the scenes 360 video here at the Hack 5 Studio last week, you may notice like it kind of looks like garbage. And unfortunately, that's pretty much how it is with the Ricoh, at least, right now. 
so with that, I have it on the timeline and I can go ahead and see that this is like a seven minute clip and let's just, you know, do a little trimmy trimmy. So that looks like a good spot to start. Drag that over. And this is fun doing with a touchpad. So there we go. Now I've got it down to about a minute and 18 seconds. You know, I'll click on that audio and get rid of it because it's just helicopter noise. And now I have a pretty little video of me looking awkward in a helicopter with boats. Also, as far as helicopters are concerned, I need to take this moment to apologize to the internet for being wrong. As it were, that was not a helicopter from Hawaii Five-0. It was in fact Magnum PI. So that's good to know. All right, so back to our edit. I can go ahead and just render this out like I would any other. And what I would want to do in this case is I want to give it a format that it's going to be happy with on, say, YouTube. So I'll go with an H.264, and I want to match the source. So basically, that's not going to mess with the dimensions or anything. So my output, as you can see down here, will still be 1920 by 960. I've already done that. And what you'll end up with is I have my equirectangular edited file. And here, you can see that the video clip is much shorter. There we go. So I've got about a 52 second clip just as I'm going over the beaches in Waikiki. At this point, I can actually go ahead and get this on the YouTubes once I inject some metadata. We talked about that briefly last week. This is what it pretty much looks like. There is a tool from YouTube called the Spatial Media Metadata Injector. I love me an injector. <laughs> and this, it, this tool, which is available for Windows and Mac and is also available as just a Python file, which is really cool because you could automate a lot of stuff with that in the command line. Um, allows you to go ahead and inject metadata into this so that it's appropriate for YouTube. So what you do is you just open, and then I choose that clip that we just made, and it's going to go ahead and uh, save out a fixed version of this. So you have to check spherical, which allows it to know like, oh, okay, so this is going to be like stretched around a sphere. You don't check the 3D top bottom, and then you hit save as, and what you end up with is, well, in this case, this file, which looks exactly like the original, except it has some extra bits in there. So now we can actually go ahead and upload this to YouTube. It will show, uh, go ahead and do it as private or unlisted because at first it's going to take a while for YouTube to actually process it and turn it into a 360 video. Hopefully this step isn't applicable if you're watching this video in the future. And I know that it is possible because uh, our friends over at Facebook have implemented just such a thing where it's able to actually detect. And so it doesn't need a special program. In fact, the uh, Facebook uploader seems to have a lot more options as far as the field of view and other cool stuff. So way to go, Facebook. If you're watching this on Facebook, by the way, this has been freebooted, in which case, yay? Okay, cool. With that, we're gonna take a quick break, and when I get back, we'll see if the hair is still crazy. Speaking of crazy, Domain.com has a crazy good deal for you guys to save on all of your domain needs. It's where Shannon and I go whenever we have brilliant ideas and want to bring them to the web. They have an amazing checkout process and a domain discovery system that makes it super simple to get your idea onto the web up and running in no time. It's affordable, it's reliable, it's easy to use, and Domain.com has been supporting Hack5 for years. So you should send them some love by sending a tweet to at Domain.com saying thank you. And when you're thinking about your next domain, thinkdomain.com. They've got a special coupon code just for us. It's HAK5, saves you an extra 20% at checkout. So when you think domain names, thinkdomain.com. Well, that nearly wraps up this week's episode of Hack5, but before I get going, I want to remind you of a few awesome things. First of all, if you've been following along for us, you know that we have been deep into the drone series, and we're going to continue that over the next few weeks while Shannon and I are hacking across the planet. We've got some amazing segments from our drone expert friend, Kevin, that even designs his own airframes. It's awesome. Getting into FPV or first-person video, which is going to be a lot of fun. Also, if you're watching this during the times where it's appropriate, it would be really rad if you could make it 
down to any of our meetups. Shannon's getting together uh, in Tokyo, as and well as myself and Sebastian on the Gold Coast in Australia and in Sydney. So check that out, hackacrosstheplanet.com. Very exciting stuff, uh, as well as all of the other ways to follow us on social media on our brand new hack5.org website. In fact, if you're new to the series, you'll find all of our other shows like Metasploit Minute and Threatwire and Hack Tip. So much good stuff over there, hak5.org. Uh, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and do a like and subscribe, all that good stuff, youtube.com slash hack5. Uh, and one last thing, of course, hackshop.com. It's what allows us to do this in this epic warehouse and bring you guys so many cool things. We have some fun stuff planned for the warehouse for the summer series. I'm very excited to get back and kick those off. Uh, so uh, you can support us directly if you would like and find out more information about all sorts of cool penetration testing gear that we develop here at hackshop.com, H-A-K-shop.com. Okay, well with all of that, Shannon's out uh, kissing llamas in Japan. Uh, we will all be back here shortly and we hope to see you soon. So uh, with all of that, for Shannon and myself, I'm Darren Kitchen, trust your techno lust. Well, that nearly...